Well, let's go back to just before Tokyo, before we kind of touch more on that. Um, how was the planning going in to, you know, this, this double peaking? I mean, you, you swam really fast, you know, before Tokyo, very, very soon be before Tokyo, and then you had to go to Tokyo. So how did you, and, and you actually swam faster in Tokyo in your 200 freestyle. So how were you able to, in a very short time, peak at this competition and then go on to Tokyo and peak again? So to sort of um, build up this peak form, we had to work from a long time ago. That means, I think, and I hope I'm not wrong, from January, like from when the year started, mm. um, from the first training, we had to work. Like we had a kind of a training camp uh, at our pool, like 80 kilometers a week. And so it was very difficult. And so we trained, but we trained for Rome because at that moment in January, I, I couldn't have known that I will qualify. I mean, I didn't know for sure. And I had no guarantee of that. And so I knew for sure I was qualified at the um, junior Europeans. So we trained for that. We trained so that, that my peak form will be achieved at Rome. And we kind of just thought that, I, I mean, hope that I could qualify. I knew I could, but like I said, we had no good guarantee. So I trained for Rome a lot and I achieved my peak form there. So objective completed, but mm, from Rome, I still, I qualified for Tokyo. And so I had to kind of, like I said, drag that peak form onto Tokyo. And so I managed to do that in the 200. Um, I managed to do it through preliminary semis and final. And, but from then on, I, I felt tired, like I'm not a robot just like um, Kolesnikov mm -hmm. said in one of his interviews. It happens and um, my objective was completed. I wanted to achieve an Olympic final and so I did. I did too and I even took fourth place. Um, two, three months before the Olympics I wasn't even qualified in the 200. And so wow. just managing to get fourth best in the world without being qualified two months ago before was just, I don't know, blew my mind. Well, not only that, you, you only just missed the medal by, uh, yeah. what, two one hundredths of a second, you know? Uh, yeah. I think, it was, let me see the time here. I had 144.68 and Sheffer was 144.66. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> amazingly close to the podium. Yeah. Uh, incredible um, swim. Yeah, that's the thing I say to myself. If um, Let me just um, turn the lights on. Sure, on here, go for it. All right, because it's getting kind no of dark outside. Yeah. Hope it works. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Right. There we go. Do you see me good? Yeah, much better. All right, perfect. And so, uh, what, what did I want to say? Ah, yeah. Uh, I, I said that to myself, and I'm still saying this to myself now. Uh, maybe if I saw him, I, I like to think I could have probably beat him because I was on one and he was on eight. So there was no way for me to see him. I barely saw Dean and Scott, who were. Um, four and five, I think. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, he was better than me. I had a very, very good race, but still he was faster than me. So I guess I just have to learn, you know, not be upset about it because yeah, I mean, it was a huge, huge objective goal for me. Like we passed the object objective by a lot. Sure. I mean, you swam the best time in Olympic final. Not many people can say that. And uh, especially at, at at your age so incredible but so talk to me about this race specifically what was going through your head in the ready room what was going through your head behind the blocks hmm. so a lot of people ask me what's my routine at uh, the starting zone where, where you get called you said the name but yeah. i always forget it yeah like um, a call room or ready room call room yeah yeah i usually listen to music actually with these headphones um i sometimes just stare at people and sometimes i just uh, do some jumping jacks like i don't have a set routine um and, but now at tokyo i listened to some music i stayed concentrated i hyped myself up and there was really just nothing going through my mind i like to think that whenever i'm in a very important moment in swimming like a final or a very important race um, i don't think about stuff anymore the stuff is done i just focus like the training is done. There's nothing you can do to it anymore. The preparation is done. 
and at the blocks um i have my lane like i'm not looking at other people and even if i'm looking i'm not actually even if i'm seeing i'm not actually looking i'm not processing that information it's just me a blank noise in my ears and uh and focus and the visualizing i've done before the race what about in a 200 it's very important to get that first 50 right where you don't over swim it you don't you don't under swim it where you, you know, give too far, too much away so in that first 50 or maybe even in right before you start what are you thinking there that helps you get on the correct pace that you want i think i wanted with my coach to go uh 24 5 i think um i don't know just that just comes naturally like the first 50 was never a struggle for me at least not in the 200 at the 100 i still have to get it better but in the 200 at least for now i did it just as planned. like i went out fast i came back fast and then went all out that was the little strategy for it but we had the times written down um i did a personal best by a lot and we just stick to the plan and it worked just um it's just a way to show how well our chemistry works, mine and my coaches. I mean, our chemistry. Yeah, did you feel that lane one was an advantage or disadvantage for you in that Olympic final? I guess it kind of was an advantage because um, in the 200, you don't feel any waves. So the, the lane, um, like with the waves, it doesn't really matter. But because I was on one, when I was breathing on my right side, which I breathe on always on the 200 and the 100, I was on the last uh, last 50. And so I was breathing on my right and I could see almost the whole pool. Like I was seeing uh, Martin Malutin, the Russian guy next to me. I was seeing Dean, I was seeing Scott, I was seeing the Korean guy, um, but I wasn't seeing the Brazilian guy because he was just a little bit too far away. And But it helped me because um, in that moment, it, it's just who is the hungriest will win. There's nothing more to it. Like who is more determined and ready for it in the moment, you know?